Hello, Mark Crossfield here. Welcome to the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. Loads to do in the first show of 2013. We've got more swings coming at you from the apps. We've also got Question of the Week and Golf Talk. Loads to do. Let's get stuck in. So we're going to look at a classic problem here, which we see from these three golfers. We see this negative spine angle, uh, and we see then the kick out in the right knee. Again here, kick out in the right knee, and this one less, but still a little bit of kick out in the right knee, um, which promotes this negative spine angle, which makes it very hard for you to tack from the right club path on the downswing. Often will tend to make you get quite steep and hit more from the outside as well. So steep I mean with your lie angle as you hit the ball so your your vertical swing plane often gets quite steep as you try and direct the ball out towards target. So let's give you a drill to try and get rid of this negative spine angle that we see from all three players turning the wrong way. It's going to be built around trying to get you to understand how you should turn on the backswing to create a backswing that allows you to hit from the right angle and also start the downswing with the right part of your body. So all three of these golfers tend to load more down with their upper body starting the downswing rather than their lower half. Let's get out there, give you some help. So reverse spine angle, we see it a lot where people turn their bodies towards the target. So the spine starts tilting towards the target. Let's give you a drill. We'll try and help you guys understand what it feels like to turn more with a straight spine angle, so not leaning this way or this way, or even exaggerate it, feel like you're turning more into a positive spine angle where you are turning your upper body more behind the ball is a great way of getting the feeling. And the only way to beat reverse spine angle I found with my students is to properly get them to understand which way they're turning. When I say to people that they're at the top of their backswing, they're bending this way, their heads just, they don't get that. Well, that's reverse spine angle, yeah, you're basically tilting that way where we need you at the top of your backswing staying being upright with left shoulder lower than right and rotated or we need you slightly bending forwards left shoulder lower than right and rotated which on a 2D camera will look like my spine is turning this way so look, I'm going to use my golf bag for this and you won't be able to hit balls with this, this is a drill, you need to be doing this just to get the feel what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 7 iron here I'm just going to jam it on my left pocket and then I'm going to get the butt end of the club right up so it's just pushing my golf bag so I feel like it's got pressure on it but it's not going to knock my golf bag over but if I went that way at all so slid to the right I would knock it over then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my golf posture just leaning forwards and I'm going to try and turn the butt end of the club with my hips off the bag so what will happen is it'll do a semicircle curve back and towards you away from the bag as your hip turns so I'm going to try and turn my hips say 30 40 degrees now from here I'm just going to take my left arm and feel like I'm reaching as far over this head cover, this driver head cover as possible. This isn't my driver, don't worry about it, I've not changed my driver. So again, butt end of the club towards the touching that bag, just pull it away from the bag, 30 degree hip turn, upper body, just feel like it's leaning over this bag to feel that my upper body feels like it's gone that way and my hips feel like they've almost gone this way. That hasn't happened but that's what it feels like. For you guys with your reverse spine angle, what you're doing as you rotate, because the right knee bows out and the hips want to move laterally to the right slightly, is you're moving your hips out from underneath your shoulders and then rotating. Well, you need to feel like your shoulders are rotating more on top of your hips. And for lots of people, they say they actually feel like their shoulders have gone this way when they get rid of their negative spine angle. So same again, this is a great drill to feel where the correct spine angle is and that's what it's about getting the feeling in your mind of where negative and positive is and then trying to work that feeling into a golf swing so just lodge the club up against my left leg in the pocket put the butt under the club onto that bag turn it away and then just reach over as far as i can with my upper body without swinging my hips over so feel like my body's reaching over then what you can do is just tilt your left shoulder down as if you're hitting a shot feel where that position is so we're moving here here and then just tilting down to obviously feel where a backswing position would be. It's a great drill to getting the feeling of negative and positive spine angle when rotated. If you can get out of your negative spine angles, 
you'll stop this temptation with negative spine angles. Always a temptation to try and start shoulders first, leave the hips back, this over the top angle, or we'll then get the vertical swing plane really steep to try and shove the ball down to target, which then really seriously affects the strike. Hope this helps. Let me know how you get on. It's a good drill. You just got to use it. Like all drills, like I say in other videos, if you use them, they will change the pattern of your practice and then in turn, the pattern of your play. It's brilliant to see two women golfers sending in videos here. Don't get enough videos sent from women. So really pleased to do this one. So here we go. Two swings left and right. Similar issues uh, with both swings. Quite different levels here of, of player. Definitely the one on the left here looks like she's been playing maybe a bit longer than the, than the woman on the right. Um, now what happens with both of these players? Lady on the right misses it. Lady on the left makes a neat little swing. But what happens is we see issues with the left elbow here on the way through. And this is really common. I see this a lot with golfers, men and women. Um, and I want to, you to try and get a slightly different relationship between your arms. We see it on the one on the left, arms and the club. So all of you this can apply for. And this kind of re relates to a release and what we've talked about, or I've talked about in other videos about how you should release the club. So let's get out there and see if we can get you to try and get the club head to overtake your hands and certainly overtake your elbows a lot more to generate a bit more reach and a little bit more club head speed, to generate a bit more power. I mean, if you look at the lady on the right, massive hip turn, shoulder turn, but not much let go with the club, still holding on to the club. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's get on the range and give these women both some help. So two swings sent through the app, brilliant to see a couple of women sending some swings. Do not get enough women sending swings, getting involved with the show, the more the merrier. So look, both of these two ladies are swinging, as I said, in a way where they don't want to throw the energies out to the end part, the head. They try to move internally quite fast, so they move their, they're turning their bodies and they're moving their elbows quite fast, but they're not throwing that energy out towards the club at the end. Now, a great way of feeling this from the outset is just get two clubs together. Get rid of the ball. Put two irons together and just grab them. Don't worry about your grip. Just grab the club so they don't clatter around too much. And just get a bit of momentum moving. So push the clubs forward, back, forwards. Again, just feel the weight of that club. Feel the extension that gives and feel how the head, or the heavy two heads, move ahead of your body. So you get this feeling of releasing the weight, releasing the power. If you were to do your swings with two clubs where it's too heavy, what will happen if you move your elbows like you do it, it'll really knock you off balance. And there's an important fact, when you do these two swings or two club swings, you've got to try and feel that your body stays quite centered with the ball, it's just rotating quite gentle with your body, gentle movements. It's more feeling the stretch with your arms and it's more feeling that the club, try and feel the club moving ahead of your hands. So at the moment that club is forward of where my hands are. It's not in line and my left elbow isn't ahead of the club head, which is what you guys are doing, which is why we see these low elbows. You've got to feel that club moving ahead of your body. Once you've done that, Hit a few shots, trying to get that same feeling of letting that club move ahead of your body rather than your body moving, elbow moving, but the club just never overtaking, which relaxes any Christmas in strike, serious club at speed, which you're going to want to build up to get the proper height and proper trajectory and, and distance on the shots that you deserve. Simple drill. It's a great way to feel the release of the club, to feel the club moving ahead, to feel the speed of the outside of all the moving parts. Um, and it's a great way to practice away from the range. Just going and hitting balls on the range like you both are is all good, but it's not gonna do as much as you swinging with two clubs for 10 minutes, seven days a week and hitting balls for only 15 minutes. Go to a range for an hour. Don't do any two club drills or other drills that might work for you. You're gonna improve, if ever, much slower than you would that if you just did the drill 10, 15 minutes each day Work on the feeling as you're doing the drill, feel what it's doing differently. That will really change the pattern in your practice and in your shots and hopefully getting you hitting some better shots. Thanks for sending the swings and hope that helps. So Tommy, 
What's your personal goal for 2013? Mark Crossfield, question mark. Play more, play less. Long shot, short and more control. Travel, short game, business development, camera angles, clothing. Thank you for your contribution to 2012. And before, it's been a fun ride. And most of the time, I agree with your lessons. Most of the time. Cheeky. So keep up the good work, Mark. Happy New Year, sir. Thank you, Tommy. Happy New Year to you too as well. Um, look, personal goals. Well, definitely clothing, yes. I'm going to wear clothing in 2013. That's a goal. Always going to put the clothing on. Um, that's a bit silly, but I'm going to say that. Um, longer shots, shorter shots, no. I like the length of my shot. I'd like to go longer, but I'd need to go to the gym more. I'm, I've, I've got three kids and a family. I haven't got time. I work a lot. Um, so the gym, I can't do as much as I would like to do it more for my longer shots. More control, I feel I've got very good control. Travel, I would like to do more travel. I've got lots of golf days planned for this year. First one at the Players Club, which hopefully you've seen the ads for. And I'll be putting the uh, payment things out very soon. So that'll be coming so you can book up. And I've got other ones planned. So hopefully I would love to travel more and get all around the world and meet everyone who's watching. Go to Sweden, go to America, go to Australia. It's just costing it up. So it doesn't cost me to get there is the problem. So I, it's something I'm working on. Camera angles, well, I'd like a cameraman, but they cost money, so, but definitely try and work on a few more camera angles. Business development, well, uh, just make more videos, try and get you guys playing more and more golf. Short game, I'm happy with more short game, could be more. Uh, play less, play more. I would like to play more. Don't get a chance to get out of the, 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 the ice box, as it's known, the cold room, this, this teaches you go enough. I would definitely like to get out there and play more. The golf days is the start of that, and I feel I want to compete a bit more, play in a few more tournaments. So definitely play more is on the agenda, subject to making sure I could video it and get some content out to you guys to enjoy and come along with me and play along with me and watch how I play and learn or not from what I do. So definitely play more, the biggest one. Thanks for watching, really nice email, uh, message. Thanks for posting it, I hope that gives you an idea a little bit more about what I would want to do. The other thing I'd love to do is buy a Phantom Flex camera, start shooting at much higher frame rates, which obviously they cost about 100 grand, so I'm not sure that's gonna happen in any of the near future. So if anyone's got a Phantom Flex camera they want to give me, more than welcome, that would make my new year. Thanks for watching. So golf talk this week guys is about one plane and two plane golf swings you'll hear about it read about it what is it i'm not really going to talk about so much the the benefits of each or negatives and benefits let's talk a little bit about what it is most like a lot of people asking what is one plane and two plane well basically it's simple one plane is when you make a backswing and your left arm is on the same plane as your shoulders so that's what we're calling one plane swings. Two plane is when your left arm is steeper than the line of your shoulders. So if my shoulders are turning and side bending on X, if my left arm is steeper than that, that's two plane. If my arms are the same level as that, that's one plane. And you've got a mixture of world-class players using one and two plane. Ben Hogan, I've got footage of Ben Hogan. He looks very much a one plane swinger. Uh, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, two plane swingers. So. Who's better than the other? Well, let the debate go on. They require slightly different movements. One plane often requires a fraction more rotation with the body on the way through to try and square the club face up. Um, two plane requires a more of a drop with your hands to try and get back down onto plane, as it's called, whatever plane means, though that's debatable as well. So one plane and two plane is simply how your left arm relates to your shoulders, steeper or on the same line. Is one better than the other? No, in my opinion. They both have merits uh, and they're both not really dealing with the point. The point is how you deliver the club to the ball. So the club path, the angle of attack and the face of the path angle. Those three things will make you hit the ball straight if you hit it out the middle of the club. And you can do those three things from one plane and two plane. And it doesn't matter if I swing flat, if I swing flat, so around my body, flat, one plane or even lower than one plane, I can still hit the ball relatively straight, subject to the lie of my club. As same as I can if I pick my hands up and get a my normal two plane swing. So one plane, two plane for me, they're not, you, you shouldn't really be worrying about if you're one plane or two plane. You should be working with your, instructors on trying to get face the path angles correct, angle of attack correct, um, 
those kind of things, your vertical swing plane, nice and uh, a sensible angle for you to hit consistent strikes. They're the things you should be working on. If it requires you to do one plane to succeed in getting a straighter path and a face to path angle, great. If it's two plane to get those correct angles, then great. There's, one's not gonna be better than the other. One plane, left arm parallel to the left shoulder or the shoulder on the back swing, so the angles, slightly steeper with the left arm than the shoulders. That is what the world knows as two plane. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.